All right. So last night I did a kind of sort of review for It Chapter 2. And a bunch of people got pissed off. I had one girl like text me this text me. Uh, leave a comment this morning like, uh, you spent like 30 minutes talking about some guy named Stevie and your adventures when really people came here to hear a review for It Part 2 and I'm so stupid and self-absorbed that I didn't bother to look you up before, see what other kind of videos you do. So I'm going to be a passive aggressive cunt and blame you for everything. But there were more like that that made some sense and I'm not a movie reviewer per se, but I guess I'm not not a movie reviewer. I'm so fucking tired right now, so I'm funny. But I know people were coming here to see, wanted to see a review for It Part 2 because, and I thought, why not do it? Because, hey, I can beat all of the real rejects and all the other reviewers and Dippy and Bumblefuck and all of them, you know, all these reviewing couples and shit. I can beat them up. I've seen it before. All of these fuckers have. Why not? Why not do it, right? So here's my review for It Part 2. And I'm going to try to do it as seriously as I can, but it's me and I might fuck it up and deal with it. I don't know. So, let me just start off by saying I'm not going to give any spoilers away. Why I'm not going to give any spoilers away is, A, I'm pretty sure Warner Brothers will have me killed since it's not out for another three weeks, and security was ridiculous for the screening I was at. All right. And B, someone, probably like a younger version of me, or maybe even me now, always takes like the spoilers and spoiler reviews and then you know, ruins it for their friends. Just a dick. You know, like, I know what happens at the end. So-and-so goes to so-and-so's house and does so-and-so. It's like, you little dick. I was going to see that movie. Yeah, well, I saw it on YouTube first. I'm going to let other people ruin it for you, okay? I'm not going to ruin it. Don't ask me. One person asked me in the comments. I'm getting to the review. Calm down. If the little angry girl is ready to type yet, the little emo, light a candle and cut yourself and you'll be okay. All right. So, um, yeah, other people can, you know, spoil it for you. Here we go with the review for it part two. There are no spoilers in this. All right. I said that there were some cameos in this film. I don't think, I'm not even going to say what they were. I did put in the comments two of them. So if you want to look at that on my last video, because somebody asked me, I said two. I didn't say all of them. All right. What did I think of It Part Two overall? It starts off in the year 2016 when the first movie, It, came out. Uh, it picks up 27 years after the events of the original film. And it starts off with something, again, this is the problem. It's a hard movie to review because it is my favorite book. I read it twice, once at the age of 12, once at the age of 14, but I haven't read it since. But I remember loving it so much. It's such a big, broad book. They couldn't possibly fit everything into it. But I'm going to, trust me, there's a reason I'm mentioning this. All right. So the beginning of It Part 2 opens with, I'm just going to say, a vicious type of, a vicious crime committed against another individual. I'm going to leave it at that. By a group of people. All right. A hideous crime. And it's really bad. It plays out. I hate to say it plays out well, but it's done really well. You believe everybody in it. And then Pennywise somehow makes himself known to one of the victims of this crime. And that's all I'm going to say at the beginning. Here's the problem I have at the very beginning of the film. In the book, I believe, it's, again, if you've read it recently, I haven't. It's been since like 1990 since I read the book. And I did read it twice. And I love that book. But I remember there was an incident like that in the book. And I'm sure that it somehow tied into why Pennywise came back. But in the movie, a lot of people left very confused as to why this, you know, really hateful graphic attack was even in the film. There is no resolution to it. There's no reasoning for it. I don't see how this... And the, Now, again, if you read the book, I'm sure there's exposition that explains how it helps to bring him back. It makes no sense why this is in here. It feels like the one thing they could have left out, honestly. Like, this was just that unnecessary, very vile, very ugly part of the film that I don't feel needed to be in there unless they're going to explain later on how this helped to bring Pennywise back. All right, so fine. So then we catch up with all the losers, you know. Uh, one of them's like, I thought he was an actor or something like that. But it turns out he's like an architect. The, the former fat kid is not fat anymore. There's Beverly Marsh. Can we talk about her real fast? I forget what her name is. She can't act. She, I just noticed that, like, she can't act at all. She has one range, and that's this. This is terrible. We have to go back. No, please don't beat me. What did he do for a living, Mrs. Kirsch? Yeah, I mean, they, can, does she move? Does she, did somebody forget to plug her in overnight? She wasn't fully charged? Okay, but she, she, was, she did a shitty job as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. She's pretty, gorgeous girl, but, you know, whatever. Um, maybe it's a ginger thing. I have no idea. And then there's um, Mike Hanlon, the African-American, who stayed in Derry. And um, there's Stanley Uris, uh, Rich, Richie Trashmouth Tozier. You know, all the kids have grown up. You get it. You know, right. So um, there's not really an event that brings them. Well, there is. The thing that happens at the beginning, and then there are a bunch of missing kids posters up again. And so the African-American guy, Mike Hanlon, goes, okay, I got to get everybody back together because obviously Pennywise has returned and we have to complete the circle and do all this. 
Um, the actors were very good at I mean, Eddie Casper. The guy who played him was right. And they did a really good job of how they looked like. These kids will look like these people when they grow up. I guarantee it. They did an excellent job. They also did an excellent job with, okay, let me get on with the plot. So, and I'm not going to ruin anything, but of course, Pennywise makes a return and starts, yes, murdering children again. And I will say in this movie, the adults return to finish the job that they, you know, finish the job they started. They didn't start it, did they? Oh, they did 27 years ago. And um, various events take, various events take place that are, you know, pretty horrifying. But, and again, I can't go too far, much further without ruining it. There is a ritual that they all have to perform in order to finally kill this thing. Even again, though, this movie crammed so much into, and it's about three hours, that a lot of it I was very, I felt the audience was very confused by. I wasn't so much because I read the book, but I think they didn't, like, again, I can't ruin anything, but there's a certain reason, a, a certain thing, I'll just say this part, it's not ruining anything, a ritual that the guy does, and part of it does not work, and there's no real reason why he, I, they get mad at him for doing it, and it just gets confusing, and he's just like, I, I, I didn't mean to get you guys all in danger or something like that. It's just like, what the fuck is going on here? I was just thoroughly confused at that point, because again, been forever since I read the book. How Pennywise manifests himself, let's break it down like that. I have to say those were the best parts, but it, after watching the movie, I was very 50-50 on it. There were some really good effects. It, there's some shout outs, I mean really direct shout outs to movies like The Thing. There's a scene lifted from The Thing. If you've ever seen John Carpenter's The Thing, there's a, spe a creature that was all prosthetically done that makes an appearance in this. It's a direct shout out. There's a shout out to uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, which Stephen King must have hated. And I already did say, but one, it's not a spoiler, but whatever, Stephen King does have a very good cameo in this film. And it's a pretty lengthy one, actually. Um, but yeah, so it's very bloody. It's, I would say it's a lot more violent than the first one. I don't know if scarier is a thing. Here's my problem with it. Some of the creations, at one part there's a, uh, a monster that takes form as like this little centipede type thing with a baby, a fetus's head crying on it. I was like, that's the coolest, creepiest thing I've ever seen. And there are several other moments like that. But then again, my problem is when they make Pennywise literally at times larger than life, he looks fucking ridiculous. He just looks like... I'm telling you, that's the thing that always happens. Every video, am I, am I wrong? People who know me, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Somebody's out there doing this to me on purpose. All right, Pennywise gets blown out of proportion literally at certain points, and he just looks like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. It's, that's what my problem is with the CGI use nowadays. It's just too much. There are certain parts where you should have just thought of something else to do, and it really distracts. There was one part at the very climax where people were laughing because it, it looked silly. It's supposed to be a very scary, serious moment about the destruction of Pennywise. And it looked, we were all kind of laughing. It looked kind of silly and ridiculous. It did turn to creepy a little bit towards the end of that scene, but whatever. And they felt like they rushed a lot of other plot points that aren't in there. Like uh, the Henry Bowers thing, him returning, is very just, you know, let's get him out there with a the knife and have him cause some trouble. And it doesn't really hold on to what happened in the book. Uh, Beverly's relationship with her abusive husband is touched upon for five seconds. Literally, he like slaps her around for five minutes and then she decides to get some balls and leave. That's it. He doesn't follow her to dairy. None of that happens. Uh, Bill Denbrough's, Denbrough's wife, Denbrough, I think it was pronounced, uh, Audra is in the film all of five minutes just to be kind of bitchy. I mean, and so it's just little things like that. And again, I feel like I'm nitpicking and I probably am because, listen, the best scene in this whole movie, I will tell you, is if you... Do not take a pee at the Chinese restaurant part. Watch the Chinese restaurant when they all meet up again. Some of the best effects and the creepiest parts happen right there. It does feel a little dragged out at points, but you know, again, they had to put a lot of this in the movie. Pennywise to me just isn't a scary villain. Even Freddy back in the day, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, think of the very first one. He's dripping, looks like he's burned. Not later on when he became cartoonist. Jason, when he was like a crazed hillbilly, running around with a bag on his head. Even part three, when he was running around and lifted, he was all contorted. They were scary kind of still. They lost it. Pennywise never had it. Let's talk about the kids. They all make a return. That's one other thing I want to talk about in this film. That, the attention to detail is uncanny in this film. So that's another real high point for it. Characters make a return, almost all the characters, if you think of people who had bit parts or one or two lines, they return. Remember the bitchy girl at the um, pharmacy who's just kind of a bitch, always you know, smacking gum? She returned, so they must have brought her back because this is 
was a scene that wasn't in the first one, as far as I remember. And then she returns as an adult. The pharmacist, that creepy leering one who was leering at Beverly, he returns. Eddie Kasprick's mother returns. They did such a good job of bringing all these extras that you saw in the first one down to the bully who yelled at um, Beverly in the stall. For even a brief fleeting second, we see all these people again. So that must have taken a lot of wrangling. A lot. Of Georgie, of course, returns. He looks still the same. One more thing I gotta say about the kids. The kids have a lot of interactions with their adult selves in this movie. And what you're told kind of at the beginning of the movie is when the adults return to Derry, they don't seem to have a really good memory of anything that happened. They barely remember where they came from. So when they get back to Derry, since Ben has been in Derry, what's his name, Ben? Oh, God, I'm forgetting, whatever. Since the African-American guy has been in there the whole time, he remembers a lot. And he basically lets them know that everything that happened that summer when they were children that we all saw in part one that wasn't everything. There was a lot more that we, that they forgot and we as an audience, I guess, collectively never saw. And I think I knew the scenes. It's been a while since I saw the first film, but yeah, there were a lot of extended scenes and you could tell because they all got a little bit older, all the kids. I, Finn Wolfhard, let me, let me just say it right now. You can tell what scenes they shot as Aston said, come back, we need you. We need you for this because he's got a wig on now. Like it's a really like, kind of crooked, like, you know, haphazard wig that he has to wear and I get it he moved on and everything but fine and they all are kind of a little bit taller I even noticed the fat kid was a little bit thinner they probably like just shoved popsicles in him before each take like eat eat damn it we have a movie to make come on eat 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 eat, eat. shove a Twinkie in his mouth get, get, I don't know just pour lava pour like lard into him just like open him up I don't know what can we do open heart surgery on him just like throw like calories in there and donuts I don't know so um yeah it was a long movie what would I and how did I feel about the finale because everybody seems to care about that in the community. The finale was very, very well done. I have to say, not the effects were up and down for me, but the finale was very well done. And this did have a very stand-by-me type of feel. Um, when you see it, you know what I'm talking about. There's parts of it, the beginning and end, that are narrated. There's a letter that's very touching in this movie that's read at the end of the movie. If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's a very nostalgic, good, drama piece when it's dramatic it's a decent horror film but it's not that great and maybe i just hold it in reverence because i love the book so much so there pennywise does have a lot of action in this film if you think you saw everything with the old woman in uh, the trailer because i was kind of worried about that it's like a five minute thing they do and i was like Shit, they show too much they actually don't they kind of manipulated that footage so you don't see everything and there's Things that happen in the trailer in that one particular scene that don't play out that way in the actual film. Okay, so is everybody happy? I did a fucking review on It Part 2. I would definitely recommend you go see it in the theater. It was fun to see. Don't drink a lot. If you drink a lot, you're going to be like my friend who was running to the bathroom every five seconds and missing stuff. If you have to miss anything, miss towards the last 20 to 30 minutes of the film before the very end. If you have to pee, I say pee then and pee right after the initial attack the hate attack you run out and pee and come back because anything else you're really gonna be playing catch up because there's a lot going on in this film all right so reviewed it hope you enjoyed the review if you didn't i did the best i could and maybe i'll reenact it wearing mind makeup with some homeless people i'll try <sighs>